Greetings by his service of the Most High God. I greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank God for another Wednesday, another happy Wednesday, and also Juneteenth. The end of safe slavery. That's what Juneteenth is. We thank God for the day. Today we're going to look at uh, uh, Revelation chapter 18, verse 21 and 22. Revelation chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us. And even what you are yet to do, we thank you. Thank you for being able to see one another once again. Thank you for being able to come to your house once again. We thank you for all your many, many, many blessings you have stored upon us. And even what you are yet to do, we thank you. Oh, God, we pray you let everything be done and say the night that will bring you honor and bring you glory. Have your way tonight. Have your way. That we will grow through and by your word and be the people you are calling us in time. Oh, God, we see the signs of your return, God, of how the world is getting and how the world's going, what's going on in the world. Have us draw now to you, God, as we draw now to you, you draw now to us. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. For your glory, your son, Jesus, we pray. And we do thank you. Amen and amen. God bless you. Revelation 18, verses 21 22. Read it from the King James Version, and it reads like this. And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Verse 22, the voice of harpers and musicians and of hypers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. No and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Let's dig, because there's some nuggets here. Some nuggets here. And a mighty angel took up a stone of great Millstone. Now, here's the point I want to bring out in the text. I want to just make a mention. We're going to be here long now. Is and a mighty angel. This leads us to understand that this, this angel must have been strong. Because the text says mighty. I want to ask, let's, let's just talk to the court. Text and let's let's let the talk quick text talk back to us. Uh, the question I want to ask the text is: This is this, what what the purpose of this mighty angel? What is the purpose of this mighty angel? That's the question I want to ask. That's the first question I want to ask the text. And what the text is going to answer back to us in a minute. The text will talk back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will talk back. to you. And, this, and a mighty angel took up a stone. I want to point out, it says a stone. It didn't say stones. It is not plural, it's singular. Which leads us to understand, and it also says, it's a great stone. It's a large stone. So for it to be a large stone, you need to ask the question, this angel had to be strong. You could not have an angel that was not strong come in and deal with this great stone. <laughs> I love God because God will say, I'm going to do something for you or do something, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it and the method of how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. He uses the method of a great, of this strong angel who is before a great stone, a huge stone, strong. A mighty angel, not your ordinary. Because I got to do something extraordinary in this text. Watch this, for your benefit. Oh my. 
a great a, a stone. Pick up a stone. Pick up a stone. Like a great millstone. A great, that great, I'm going to repeat it. A word great in the text means large stone. Can I just use my sanctified imagination? Don't forget you said years ago. It was a huge mega stone. Mm -hmm. Catch what I'm saying. Huge mega stone of, of, of this mighty angel. It had to be mighty for this huge mega stone. Meal stone. Don't stop me anytime you want to. Here's what he said. What, is it, what did he do with the stone? It's in the text. He cast it into the sea. I want to submit to us tonight in verse 8 of 21 is the number one, the angel is mighty. Number two, the stone is huge and humongous. And he throws the stone in the sea. Now I'm going to start right there. He does all this to give an example of what he's going to do next. Mm -hmm. It's a you see, that's one thing, these little things that make you think. The things make you go, hmm. <laughs> He does all this to show us what's going to happen, the, the next event that's going to take place. Watch this. He casts into the sea. Same. Same. Whoa. And well, I'm using the word whoa, but I'll use the word. Same thus with violence. With violence, y'all. He's throwing this stone, this huge stone. With violence. He ain't just, you know, I'm trying to do this. Right. He ain't going like this. Right. I mean, this is huge. He's mighty. He's strong. He takes a huge stone and he throws it violently into the sea. Watch. I'm going to go a little further than a minute. Shall that great city Babylon be thrown down? Thrown down. And shall be found no more. He used a stone, this huge stone, thrown in the sea. He said the same way that you see the stone being thrown into the sea, the same way Babylon shall be thrown. And watch what he says again. And you shall not find it anymore. Watch this. It's like, mm, I'm trying to take myself ahead of myself. Let me do it this way. Then a strong and powerful angel performed a symbolic yeah. action by taking upon him an enormous, enormous millstone and throwing it into the sea where it disappeared. It sunk. What you said. <laughs> Good sound effect. Like that. The sound of the solution. <laughs> Disappeared. Watch this. Here John is talking and he's really prophesizing of what's going to happen to Babylon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he prophesies that in the same way, that is, with the same sort of violence, the great city Babylon would be thrown down and disappear forever. Forever. Not be found again. Again, when you say this, as if it had never been in existence. <laughs> the Bible is emphatic. <laughs> Woo! Babylon will never, ever be found anymore at all. Its fall will be final and will be irreversible. Meaning that when God does something, you can't reverse it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. With such force shall Babylon be hurled to its destruction. I'm going to say something more. Thank you, Lord, for that, bringing it back to my attention. 
along with political, watch this, along with political Babylon, the entire world order that is in opposition to God will come to an end. The Antichrist, the Antichrist will make his final attempt to defeat the plan of God. Right now, he's trying to defeat the plan of God. The Antichrist. Right now, as we said, right now, he's trying to foil the plan of God. As I speak. <laughs> Notice I said he would do his final, final attempt. The key word is attempt. <laughs> to defeat God's plan. And his rule will come to its final end when Christ returns to the earth. The kingdom of God will bring, watch this, will bring a brand new, a brand new <laughs> order such as a world would never have seen before. This old world order will be destroyed. It will no longer exist. And when Christ returns, he will bring a new, brand new. The, 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 the biggest word has what is called a brand. And actually, the church has a, this church has a brand. Star of Bethlehem Baptist Pentecost Church. And then we got an emblem in the background. It's our brand. He will come with a brand new brand. His kingdom to the earth. His kingdom. Not, can I just do this for a minute? Not Trump's kingdom. Not Biden's kingdom. Not those in Senate. Not those in Congress. But God's kingdom. When his son comes to the earth. Wow. Mm, y'all can add on. Stop me in the tackle. I'm a roll. 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 Talk to me. Oh, this is Praise God. Uh, the word attempt. Something happened to me. Uh, anyway, but anyway, something happened to me on uh, Monday morning. And uh, I wasn't bragging about it, what happened, but it, it did. What happened came to take my life out. And I mean, literally take my life out. And after it happened, I sat there and I said, Boom, I didn't get nervous. I didn't scream. I didn't do nothing. And the Lord spoke to me and said, that happened. One reason it happened because it came to encourage you that attempts will come. They will come. But know that the attempts are going to fail. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I was like, okay. I guess the attempts will be made the rest of your life. I said, but my hand is on you. You look for the greater part, which is the failure part. It would have failed. I see something fail, and it shouldn't have failed in natural, but it fell, I mean, right before my eyes. And that's it. I'm going to share it real quick because I think it encouraged you. I was driving to work and my hours changed, 1.30 in the morning, the light turned green. And when I took off, because I waited a few minutes, when I took off to go through the light, it was my turn. Uh -huh. I, I don't know where this car even came from. It was bearing down, I know at least he was going at least 80 or not more. Mm -hmm. Now, since Devon had heard the screech, this was an old man of war. I'm like two or three streets over from a man of war. Wow. And all I heard was skrrr, and I seen it like a deer with the headlights. I seen it, and I said, he's going to hit me. I couldn't go nowhere. Right. Put my hands on the wheel. Jesus didn't come out. I didn't get fear, fear for nothing. I just sat there. I said, he's going to hit me. He kept coming. I heard the skrrr, and I said, let me turn my face, because I don't want to be where I see it. Turn my face. When I turn my face, I kept hearing the skrrr. I said, Lord, where is he going to hit me? <laughs> 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 I kept going, but that's kind of where I was at. But as I put my hand on the wheel, I kept hearing the square, and when I kept hearing it, it never happened. I looked up, and in my window, he was going, I'm like I said, 80. He didn't hit nothing. He was on two wheels in front of my car. I took the bottom of his car. Everything up in his car, I said he was on two wheels. and came right over my car, never hit it, and kept going, hit the median, and kept going. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how that car went on two wheels because he didn't hit nothing. He was going full speed. They were blowing the hand, trying to turn his side. He was still going full speed. I mean, the light was right there. Wow. He should have been moving real quick. It should have happened just like that. But it kept going, skrrr. I'm like, what in the world? When 
I looked up. And I'm like, what am I looking at? I'm looking at the bottom of his car, and he's on two wheels. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was the attempt of my life to take me out, but it failed. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. You should have told me that. Thank you, God. I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't have told me that. No, you should have told me that. You should have told all of us that. When you said word attempt that I used earlier and she connected with it. As long as you're under the blood, yes. hear me clearly. Yes. You're going to have some attempts mm -hmm. at you. And I want to encourage, because I want to connect with that. I want to encourage you to stay under the blood. Yes. Old folks said stay under the blood. Yes. Be covered by the blood. Yes. Stay connected with God. Yes. Don't ever leave God. Mm -hmm. Because if you stay with God under, under the blood, God will protect you. Yes. Every attempt. Yes. Okay, you don't believe me? I, I told you you should have told me. You remember the story of Job? There was a tip at Job. Oh, y'all, you took me down. Yeah. Yep. The devil came, had a conversation with God. And God said to Jay, uh, the devil said, Have you considered my servant Job? He said, Yeah, I have. You considered my servant Job? He said, Yeah, I have. I tried to tempt, I tempted many a time to try to get to him. I'm having somebody else because you can attempt at you now. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I want to say if you're attempt, don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Right. Come here, y'all. Come here, y'all. Mm -hmm. Don't get frustrated at the attempts that are at you. Be encouraged that you with God because the attempts coming at you. Yes. Be encouraged that God will bless you in the attempts yes. Yes, of the devil at you and coming at you with strong forces. Yes. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. But it's our job yes. as believers, authentic, true believers, that's our job to stand steadfast, unmovable. The Bible says in, immovable. Depending on what translation you look at. Steadfast and always abounding in the work of the Lord for knowing that your labor in the Lord is what? Come on, talk to me, somebody. It's not in vain. The attempts are going to come. What, how you handle the attempts is the key. Here, Joe, he loses. I'm, 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 I'm cutting to the chase, okay? He's, he's, he's conversation with the devil and God. He allows, watch this, the, the Lord allows the devil to get at everything but him. He says to me, he said, don't touch Joe. But he does touch his children. He does touch the seed she has in the camels, the yoke of oxen. He does touch them, but doesn't touch Job. Now watch this. As he touched Job's children and his lifestyle, Job could have went crazy. Mm -hmm. He could have lost He said, my children, my sons, my daughters. He could have lost it. He could have cracked up. But he held on. If you look at chapter 1 of Job, I believe the last couple of verses of it, he said, Job said this. The Bible says this. Job did not charge God foolishly. He did not charge God foolishly. He still held on. He lost, he lost his sons and daughters, his chairs, his camels, his yoke box, and all that. He lost all that. But the Bible says he did not charge God foolishly. Meaning that he didn't blame God for all that. Right, right. <laughs> and then it goes on in a very diverse in a chapter. He says, here's what he did, which is really amazing to me. He loses all that. But guess what he does? He shaves his head in sackcloth and ashes, and he goes into worship. Wait a minute. How can you? See, you did that to me. How can you go into worship and you lose your, 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 your vital children and your, your livestock? You go into worship. You don't, you don't accuse God of anything, but you go into worship, and you worship God. That's closeness. That's a made of mind. Yes. Well, you go on to chapter 2. I'm hurry on. And now, another conversation with the devil and the Lord. He says, he alive. He said, you may afflict his body, but wait, watch this, but you keep him alive. Watch this. He afflicts him with sore boards. Here's his sore boards for a long period of time. A long, hear me, a long period of time. Sister Joe got frustrated with Job being in this condition, mm -hmm. she makes a statement such as this. 
why don't you curse God and die? The devil said, if I can't get you this way, I'll get you through her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, I just, can I just use my second imagination for the second time? He said, first of all, he thinks he's going to get to him through her. But watch what I'm going to tell you. Job shows us he loves God more than he does her. Uh -huh. Yes. Catch this, y'all. He shows us in a great example. He says, I love God more than you, girl. Uh -huh. I love you, but I love him more. Can I just throw y'all something else that I just came to my spirit? He still, in his condition, still trusts God. Yes. 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 He does. Yes. 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 Messed up physically. So boys. It got to the point he had he could scrape them off. Scrape them off. He says, woman, you talk as a foolish woman. Mm -hmm. He still holds on. Because he gets attempts after attempts. He, attempt of his livestock. Attempt of his children. Attempt of himself. Attempt to his friends. Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar. Attempts to them. Mm -hmm. He still holds on. He, it gets to the point where it does hit, it does hit him. Can I just do this, y'all? It does hit him mentally for a minute. Catch what I just said, for a minute. Because the Bible says he regrets the day that he was born. But guess what? He still holds on. Because in chapter 13, verse 15, here's what he says in his feeble way. Though he slay me. Can I go this way? Though I got to go through what I'm going through, yet. I said it, I said it periodically, but I'm going to say it again. I said it in a while. Yet. I'll trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I'm going through all this, and all this stuff's going on in my life. He said, I'm still going to trust him. Now, I'm gonna have, I, I got to say this because it's, it's going to help, help us out. Because we're going through, all of us are going through something. It's affecting us in some kind of way. All of us are going through something. It's affecting us. Now, say it again, emphasizing, he held on. He holds on. Mm -hmm. And watch this. His friends tell him he done done something wrong. Mm -hmm. You must have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they talk about it. Guess what? Here's where the shift comes in. Go to chapter 42. I told you I'm going to come to the chest because this is a, that's a long story. Mm -hmm. In chapter 42, the Bible says, Job prays for his friends. Mm -hmm. Those who mess with him, those who criticize him, he prays for them. Watch this. I call that the prayer a shift. Because as soon as he prayed, his whole life shifts. His yoke of oxen multiplies. Mm -hmm. His she asses multiplies. His camels multiply. Watch this. He has no children, but now he children multiplies. Right. And you know, he lives 140 years after all this takes place. Yeah. Why? Because he holds on. Yes. He hangs on in there after the attempts. Of the enemy and him. At all costs, he holds on. And it gives us a great indication when you hold on and you still trust God in the midst of what you're going through, God said, I'll bless you. Yes, yes, yes. You hang on through the test, you hang on through the troubles, you hang on through the attempts. Now, I'm going to bless you. You got to start with that. Anybody on verse 21 of Revelation chapter 18? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Talk to me. Yes, Can't get yours together. I need to read something. Please. Go ahead. Just look at the different boils. Verse 21. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Like my great 
Yes. Uh huh. And he has to lead to the sea. Yes. With a mighty balance. Mm -hmm. That destroyer, Babylon, he said, shall be found no more. And suddenly, I didn't realize that uh, Babylon had begun in Genesis 10, and it had continued, if I'm correct, uninterrupted. Progressively, yes. it was uninterrupted in one form or another, mm -hmm. but that when God got you listening, yes, to say I've given you sixty-five books mm -hmm. to get it together, <laughs> yes, because we in the sixty-six exactly right to get it together. How he he didn't just say something about me. No, no. That really touched me. He said because. Disturbing the millstone, he tore down their prosperity, he tore down their arrogance, yeah. he tore down their sorcery, he tore down everything, everything. with hay. One rock. Hay. One so enormous rock. Oh my goodness, a great stone of violence yes. to say no more. Because mm -hmm. we didn't study it in Revelation when the seed was spread and everything yes. like that, yes. but now he's saying, you're not going to be brought back up. No. That's that really was touching the grace of God. Yes. I mean, to the end. Exactly. He gave grace, but when he's done. Yeah. When he's done, he's done. He's done. Yes. He's done. Absolutely. He's done. Absolutely. And you said it brought back, well, I almost forgot it. Looks like Babylon up to this up to this point has gotten away with everything. Yes. Looks like it's gotten away. Oh. But I, 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 I was talking to somebody, I forgot who it was when it was, just recently. It looked like Babylon was getting away. Mm -hmm. But Babylon did get away. I want to say this. They did all the stuff they did. And, and, and you read the previous verses. Uh, John called Babylon as, a, as she. Mm -hmm. Babylon did all kinds of stuff. All kinds of crazy stuff. Now God goes into the, the end toward the end of chapter 18 and says, okay, you got you thought you got to die. Watch this, you didn't get away. And it's the day that the enemy thinks he's getting away. But he, he's not getting back. God, I love God because he, he gives you still gives you grace. He gives us grace. He gives us time to get ourselves together, get ourselves right with God. After so long, God loses his patience. He loses his patience with Babylon. As Mr. Trapp said, from Genesis chapter 10 to Revelation, she thought she was getting Bible. But God said, no, I gave you time. And if you recall, God allowed Babylon to repent. And Babylon refused to repent. And God said, now because you refuse to repent, now you will pay the price. You will suffer the consequences of non-repentance. Can I just say something? We cannot get by without repenting. Let me go even further. Don't go a long period of time when you repent. You tread on dangerous ground. When you know you've done wrong, repent. Immediately. Immediately. Because if we wait, you may not get right. right. Repent immediately when you know you've done wrong. Yes. Anybody else? Okay. Listen to, listen to the cat here. When she reads from God's word, what verse 21 says. Go ahead, sis. <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, just check this chapter 18, verse 21. This is what, this is what the new, the God's word says. Then a powerful angel picked up a stone that was like a Hold large millstone. Hold up. This powerful. Again, I want to re emphasize. This ain't no ordinary angel. This is a powerful angel. Picks up a what? Okay, keep going. That was like a large millstone. There you go. Keep going. He threw it into the sea and said, the important city Babylon will be thrown down with the same force. It will never be found again. Mm. 
Check that out. The same force, the same violence that he picks a stone up and throws it into the sea, the same way it will happen to the city, the great city Babylon, and to be found no more. Let me read this. I almost say that you did. A powerful angel then picked up a huge stone and threw it into the sea. The angel said, this is how, this is how the great city of Babylon will be thrown down and never to rise again. Again, I want to emphasize, as if it had never existed. <laughs> what he said, and I, and I read earlier, which is irreversible. This city will not be restored. You read some, uh, 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 some places in the Bible where God restored them? <coughs> this city right here will not be restored at all. Never exist. Anybody else on, on 21 before I go to 22? All right, let's go to 22. I don't know why my spot's so small when I do this one. And the voice of what's it, the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. The word thee is you. <laughs> and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he will be. I'll deal with that in a minute. Shall be found anymore in thee, in you. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee or in you. What is he saying? The voice or sound of harpists, the lure players, who accompany their own singing of musicians, of pipers, flute players, and trumpeters will be no more. Now watch this. Let me go back to 18 for a minute. I mean to uh, 21 for a minute. It will no longer exist. Everything connected with her that was wrong will be no more either. All the harps, the musicians, the pipers, and all that who are connected. Watch this. Be careful who you're connected with. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everything that was connected with Babylon will be no more. <laughs> Notice, let me go back a little bit. Babylon was a, a place where they were, were just, I'm going to say this way, ripping people off to make themselves rich for their own, their own selves. And so God said, now, all your stuff is coming to an end. Watch what else he says. No workman doing any kind of work. <laughs> Watch this expert in art will ever again live in you. All the craft that you have in your hand, that you can do with your hands, will be done, done away with. You use your hands to manip manipulate people and bamboozle and who, mm -hmm. I said it well, and hoodwink them right. to get yourself money or to make yourself money. That craft that you have been given will be taken from you and you'll be destroyed with Babylon. <laughs> the sound of grinding meal, of grinding stone, of crushing of grain. Watch this. All your celebrating are coming to an end. All your celebrating, all your jumping and dancing, all the stuff you're doing is coming to an end. <laughs> all the craftsmen will be gone. How you make your money will cease. Mm. 
Neither will there be a sound even of a millstone. It probably includes all the work of factories. Mm -hmm. All the factory work will be gone. Will cease. What, what God is saying, I'm taking everything, everything out. Mm -hmm. I told you, won't exist anymore. I'm taking everything that's connected with Babylon. It shall be cut off and into and no longer exist either. Wow. Everything connected with it will be gone. God is serious about sin. He wants us to draw nigh to him. And as we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. Any, any ask any questions as it relates to uh, 22? Yes, ma'am. Did need to be heard anymore. Was that strong that it also destroyed everything in 22? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to use another word. It was a continuation. 22 was a continuation of 21. Mm -hmm. He hurls the stone violently in the sea. Mm -hmm. He said, you will no, you no longer hear that in 22. Mm -hmm. Because everything connected with it will be destroyed. And there will be no need for a sound of a millstone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else will be exact. Just go ahead. What it does, that, that millstone kills everything that Babylon was being productive of. Mm -hmm. The sorcery, mm -hmm. manufacturing, uh, I mean, like I did before, used the stores, Macy's, Dillard's, and all that stuff was gone. Gone, gone, gone. He, he, when God does it, he does it well, and he destroys everything. Everything. Because as I read in 21, it was, when Jesus comes, he's going to have a new kingdom. A new, brand new. Not this world system we got now. And that's why, if we're paying attention, that's why we need to understand that this world system we got now is jacked up. It's jacked up. It's corrupt. The politicians are corrupt. And that's just where, when I read in verse 21, uh, that all this stuff will be put up, done away with. It will end mm -hmm. when Jesus comes and sets this kingdom on earth and have a brand new system that will not be corrupt. Anybody else? Nobody else? Go ahead. I see your finger. Yes. 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 Six times. Which, which, let me connect with that. It's been repeated six times about that. Leads us understanding that he's given them warning after warning after warning, and they did not adhere to the warnings of the Lord. He said, okay, y'all think I'm playing. I ain't playing, bad grammar. I'm not playing. When I said I'm going to do a thing, I'm going to do a thing. But I, I'm allowing you the opportunity to get right with me. Babylon, they, they, they got blinded by their success. <laughs> That's the word I just said. They got blinded by their success. 
They got blinded by their prosperity. They got blinded by all the money that they were making and how they were ripping off the poor. They were blinded by all the stuff they were doing. Let me add this as a footnote. The devil will blind even the church people. Now catch what I just said. I said church people. I didn't say saints. That's what getting between saints and church people. Okay. Since y'all laughing at me and looking at me. The difference is, church people just go to church. There's no change. No change. Saints are devoted to God. And they're hungry and they're thirsty for God. They want more of God. They desire more of God. And I want to point this out and make this real clear. Let's be saints. Yes. And not be church people. Right. Be saints. Not church people. Because church people are going to lose out. Because they're going through formality. And not a hunger and a thirst for God. Let me, Lisa, let me use your daughter for me. Mm -hmm. again. Jackie's been here before. And I'm closing with this. And this is not any other questions. Jackie's been here before. But Jackie came Sunday with purpose. Mm -hmm. And I want to emphasize what I'm going to say. Do not come to the church, just become the church. You do yourself a disservice. Just come to church and become to church and say, I'll be the church. Mm -hmm. Church should not be a ritual. <laughs> no, it shouldn't. Hear me, y'all. Church should not be a ritual. Oh, I'm in the church. Okay, did you did you get something that you can you can grow off of? I just went to church. No. Come to church looking for God to do something yes. in your life. Because yes. none of us are perfect. We all need Spiritual medicine. Yes. The word of God. Yes. Do not turn a deaf ear to whoever's talking or whoever's teaching, whoever's preaching. A deaf ear to God's word. It is your vitamin A. B. C. D. And D. It's your vitamins. Your spiritual vitamin. She came hungry. When I didn't want to read James, because it was too long, she said, I came thirsty. She didn't hide it. She said, I came, I, I'm thirsty. And then some matter how, I, I'm going to call the person name, I'm going to call the person name, I'm going to call the other name now. Cassandra said, we got time. Yeah. What she was saying, I'm hungry too. Right. I come to receive the word of God. And that's someone says me. It's God. It's God. Let's get that clear. Let's make that clear. It's God. See, we got time. So she come hungry. She wanted. She wanted. And some others wanted. You got to come to church to come to church. To receive of God and want God. And desire God. Thirst and hunger for God and be satisfied when you get here from what you get from God. Anybody else want to add? I need you to read 22, Sister Catherine. Listen to what 22 says from God's Word. With another, another question, I will end. and trumpets will no longer be heard. No workers will ever set up shop. I like this. Workers shall never set up shop in that city. And the sound of grinding grain 
will be silenced forever. Forever. Never be heard again. Wow. Next we will end chapter 18. It's a continuation of 21 and 22. <laughs> of how the destruction of Babylon will happen. Any other questions? Any other? Yes, ma'am. Come to me. said yes. If you just, if I just told you to so release a lie, number one, I need to repent to her first. Then repent to God. No, first repent to God. Then repent to her. That's what it God has an order. God has order. And I must repent to him first and go to her repent. Then the other one, yes. Yes. And here's the thing, here's the thing about repentance, Sister Cassie, she said that. Don't repent and go back and do it again. Because here, I, 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 have, I have a problem. I had a problem. I still have a problem. Years ago, there was a preacher who said, he goes into John, 1 John. He says, we have an advocate with the Father. I think we do. Once well, you go and read that and do that research on that, it doesn't mean you have an advocate with the Father to keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Repentance means to turn from and turn to I'm turning from that sin and turning to God. Means if I go back to it, I didn't turn from it. <laughs> I'm still connected to it. But if I'm going to authentically repent to God, I'm turning from that and turning to God. And allowing God to do a, a work in me that I be the servant he's called for this end time. And we have a habit of taking scripture and twisting it to meet how we how we feel. Let me go this route. route. It ain't about how you feel either. Right. That's what gets us in trouble. I feel. No. What does God say? What does God's word say about my situation or what I'm doing that is wrong? I got it. I got it. We got when we repent. It it's it's, it's real. It should be authentic. It should not be a habit of repenting of the same thing. I just should not even come back to the Lord and say, oh, I lied to Lisa one more time. God. Yeah. <laughs> no, I said one time, I said, I lied to Sister Lisa. Forgive me. And go to Sister Lisa and say, my apologies, I did not tell you the truth. But we go around skipping over and Can I just go further? Since you, since you question. We dance over that. We dance over that. And we dance over it and without repenting to God. Okay, y'all bought me that, so I'm going there. You bought me that. <laughs> there must be authentic repentance. And then you have a right to dance. But if when there is no re dance, no repentance, there is no dance. There should be no dance. Mm -hmm. You and I cannot dance over sin. Hear me clearly. We cannot. And think we're going to make it in heaven. That's old school teaching. But it's right. Old folks said it's tight, but it's right. Mm -hmm. It is. So that, did I help you out? I, I know I took a long time seeing it around. But okay. Anybody else? Good to see each and every one of you. I trust you got a nugget or two from these two verses of scripture that will help you out. And I would encourage you to hold on. Thank you for your inputs. Thank you so much. 
we have some names here. I want to add, uh, I want to add uh, Sister Betty Warren. Uh, she went back in the hospital today, or this morning. Uh, we sent her home last week. She had to go right back this morning. I want to pray for her as well. Let's look God in prayer. Is Colonel Britton? Is yeah. that him? Colonel Britton? Colonel Britton. Written, okay. Okay, gotcha. All right. Let's look to God. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy. And all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have bestowed upon we, your people. You are better than us. We are to ourselves, whereby we're glad of not. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you mean to us. You are everything. You are all in all. We thank you, Lord. We come to God, ask you to bless each one that is assembled here in your house, name by name and one by one. Meet the needs of this your people, God. Open doors, provide for this your people, God. Strengthen this your people, spirit, God. Strengthen God. Give them a home and give them a thirst for you, God. Wanting and desiring more of you, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Move mightily and move awesomely for this, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. God, I come to you with the names you brought before us, God. We pray you bless uh, Carolyn Britton. Touch and bless her with your mighty hand, God. You know where she stands in need of God. Bless in the name of Jesus, we pray. God, bless the Diane Morgan and yes. family. Touch and strengthen with your mighty hand, God. You move mightily and awesomely for the her and her family, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Bless her grandson, Darion Morgan. Touch his life, touch his heart, touch his mind, God. In a mighty abundant way, God. I pray you bless him, God. In Jesus' name, we pray, God. I pray, God, you bless Jeremiah Newby, God. Bless and move for Jeremiah Newby in the name of Jesus. Move by your mighty hand and your mighty power for Jeremiah Newby, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, I pray, God, you bless Clarice Combs, touch about your mighty hand of healing, God. Move out every ache, every pain, every discomfort. Touch with your healing hand. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you're blessed. Clifford, touch his body, your mighty hand of healing, God. Oh, God, move by your mighty hand and your mighty power for Clifford, God. Touch in Jesus' name, we pray. God, we pray, God, you're blessed. Uh, James Freeman, Touch it by your mighty hand of healing, God. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power for James Freeman, God. Oh, God, touch in Jesus' name. Touch the Betty Warren, God. Touch her body with your mighty hand of healing, God. Touch in the name of Jesus, we pray, God. Oh, God, bring strength to our body, God. Oh, God, help her to, to breathe better, God. Bless and touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray you bring uh, healing to her body, God. Oh, God, in Jesus' name we pray. God, I pray, God, you bless Brenda, Brenda Rose. Touch and bless her, God, to your mighty hand, God. And I pray, God, you move, God, restore, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, I pray, God, you bless the upcoming service on Sunday morning. In the worship experience on Sunday, God, be that everything be done and said. They will bring you honor and bring you glory. Bring oneness, bring unity in the worship experience on Sunday, God. Oh, God, help us come hungry and thirsty for more of you, God. Bless in a mighty and an abundant way, God. We cast out every hindering spirit. Every spirit that is out of you, we cast it out in the name of Jesus, we pray. Go up and down every aisle, every pew, and anoint a fresh God. We pray fresh anointing, God, in the room on Sunday morning, God. Fresh anointing, God. Bless in a mighty abundant way, God. Bless those who be traveling from Louisville, God. Give them travelers here, God. Give them travelers back, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless the man who brings the word, God. Be with him and speak to him, God. Use him for your glory and honor, God. Bless in a mighty but the way, God. I pray, God, you have your way on Sunday morning, God. Oh, God, have your way, God. We be blessed. We be strengthened and be encouraged, God. Oh, God, as we leave your house and go to our house, give us traveling mercy, God. Bind every mechanical problem. Dispatch your angels around us our travel, God. We pray, God, traveling mercy, God. Oh, God, these blessings we ask. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name we pray and we do thank you. 
Amen and amen. The Lord bless you, Lord keep you. Until next week, the Lord say the same. Verses 23, 24. God bless you.